Hey everyone, before we start the video, I'd just like to let you know that when buying Robux or Premium, you can use my star code AlvinBlocks. When you get to the checkout, click over here and then enter the code AlvinBlocks. And that way, I will get 5% of your purchase at no extra cost to you. It's a great way to help support the channel and the videos that I create. So don't forget to use star code AlvinBlocks when buying Premium or Robux. Let's get straight into the video. Hello and welcome to the 8th video in my scripting series. Today we're going to be looking at returning. Now before you watch this video you're going to need to know about functions, parameters and arguments and I've done videos on those topics uh, in this series already so I'll leave a link in the card or in the description down below so you can go and check those out. So returning, it allows you to send back data from a function so that it can be used later on. So in this example we have a function which adds two numbers together and we've got the parameters number one and number two and we send the arguments three and five to this function and it will calculate the result by adding them together. So we're calling add numbers with three and five as number one and number two respectively and then we're adding them together and we are uh, tying them to this result variable. Now this works fine and we could print out the result and it would print for us. So let's go ahead and do that right now. I'm just going to disable my other script and let's run this and so we should get a result of 8 which is great so we've got our result but now it's been calculated what if you want to do something with that result maybe we want to use it later on okay so let's say we've got our result of 8 it's been printed out but now what if we wanted to later on print out um, that you know print out that number eight I know we printed it in the function but what if we wanted to print it after we'd calculated it right um, or maybe for something else I don't know maybe we wanted to do um, like a calculation with that number we can't we can't get that number because we've, 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 we've printed it out in the function but it's not stored anywhere once we've calculated it it's it's stored locally in this variable but nowhere else what we could do is maybe create a fun a variable outside of here called um, saved value and then we could say um, saved value equals number one and number two and then later on we could get the saved value but the problem with that is that it's going to get overwritten and it's just not efficient because eventually we're going to call this function again and saved value is going to get overwritten so how do we send this saved value or this result back to where we called it from because we might want to do something with it later on and you you can't have it in the function because this function is only meant to add the numbers together well that is where returning comes in returning allows you to send some information back from this function back down to where we called it from so that we can use it later on so to return something what you do is you you basically stop the function so when you return something the function stops running and it sends some information back to where we called it from. So we need to return some information. You could return nothing and that would just stop the function. But if you want to send a message back or some data, we can return whatever we like. So we could return the result variable that we just created or we could return number one and number two. But we're just going to return result as that's um, we could do either, but we've saved uh, we stored number one and number two in a variable so we return our result and now we've sent that data back down here to where we have called the function so it can be used somewhere else but we 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 can't actually you know access this data because we now need to store that as a variable so anything that we return that we want to use later on we have to save in a variable so let's just create a variable here so local and let's just call it um, uh, uh, calculation results you can call it whatever you like I'm just gonna call it calculation result and now what's gonna happen is the result of the two numbers we added together so in this case it will be 8 gets returned and now calculation result is equal to 8 so at the moment it's 
set to calling this function. But when we return something to this function, then the calculation result will become whatever is returned. So it's now going to be 8. So if we print it out, calculation result, it's going to print out 8 for us. And notice how we haven't printed in the function. So this is actually being printed down here. It's been, we, we, we've called our function, it's added the two numbers that we gave together, and it's returned it back to this variable. It's now stored in calculation result, and we can use it outside of the function. We could maybe multiply it by 10 if you wanted to, and then we would get 80. So what's happened is the function has done the right thing, it's, it's added our numbers together, and then it sent the result back to us so that we can do something else with it later on. So that's how you return. But you're probably wanting to know a, um, you know, a practical use of returning because you could just add two numbers together and print them out. There's nothing stopping you. So I'm going to show you another example. And by the way, sorry about my voice. Um, I'm currently suffering with a cold. So um, here we go. Our second example. I'm just going to disable the first script we had. There we go. Here's my second example. So we have a function here which will create a part and I'm passing through arguments for the transparency, the colour and whether it's anchored or not. And in this function I'm creating the part, I'm setting the transparency and the colour and the anchored properties and then I'm putting it in the workspace. If I run this script you will see that the part gets created. I just can't find it. Uh, da -da -da. Oh, the script is disabled still. Whoops. You will see this time that the part gets created, okay, with our properties. So it's it's red. This is basically a color three value made up of three values RGB, and this means red. It was semi-transparent, so 0.5, and it was also anchored. So we've created this part, but now that I've created it, I can't actually change any of the properties. I can't just, you know, say, oh, um, create part, blah, 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 dot um, reflectance, like this. Okay, I can't, I can't do this. I can't change a property of it after, after I've, I've called the function. So how am I going to get this part so that I can do something with it later on? Well, you could say... Um, game dot workspace dot part, but what if you had lots of parts created with the same name, or you know um, you you didn't, or you had uh, a part and you didn't know what the name was because you might specify the name here, and it could change whatever. You you need to have a way to access this part that you've just created. And right now, we've just called the function to create the part. When the part's created, this function just stops running and we can't access it anymore. So we need to return the part back to where we called it from. So I'm gonna say return part. And if you're wondering what you can return, you can return any data. You could return a string, so text, uh, a number, uh, a Boolean value, so true or false, or even an object like we're doing in this case. We are returning our part, which is an object in the game that we've just created. So when I say return part, it's going to send back to where we called it from a reference to this part. And as I've said before, we need to set it as a variable so that we can reference it in the future and we can get it. So I'm going to say local, I'm going to give it a name, it can be anything, so we can say my returned part equals, and this way when we call the function, whatever gets returned, so in this case the part, is going to now be um, this, uh, it's going to be equal to this variable, it's going to be set to this variable. So when we say my returned part, we can now access its properties and we have a unique reference to this part that's in the game. So we can now say my return part and we could change its colour again if we wanted to um, to colour 3 from RGB. Don't worry if you don't have to do this. 
uh, I'm now setting it to blue, okay, because uh, we have red, green, and blue, sorry, green, we're setting it to green, um, because I've told it to here, so we can change the properties again once it's been returned, so let's run this, and hopefully we now have a green part, I know I set it to red over here, but what happened is the part got created, and then as soon as it was created, immediately after, we updated the colour again, so you didn't see it change, so we can change all of the properties, we can have a unique reference to this part after we've created it because you might want to do something to it once you've created it. You want to have like a, um, a reference to it, a way to access it once you've created it. And that's what returning allows you to do. It allows you to um, do something in the function and then you can send some data back. But that is not the end. Um, returning can also be used to send messages. I said about strings earlier. Well, you could have a function that maybe um, checks something or calculates something, and you want to know whether it was a success or not. Well, you could return true or false, depending on what went wrong. You could return a string with like an error code, and then you could interpret it later on to see if something was wrong in your script. So there's lots of <clears throat> uses for returning and we'll be looking at more of those in a future episode but this is all you need to know right now is that returning allows you to send data back from a function so that it can be used later on because if you think about it if we have a function and we're running it multiple times creating multiple parts or doing multiple calculations we can't actually um, get a reference get some access back to the things that we're creating so if we return the part then we can have it you know stored for later on we might want to do something else to it so that was a quick video on returning if you found it useful please click the share button and share it with your friends and anybody who would find this useful as well and don't forget to check out the rest of the series lots of great information in there don't forget to subscribe to the channel you can click on the Alvin Blocks logo in the middle of your screen the next video will be on your screen as well and uh, don't forget to use star code Alvin Blocks when buying Roblox Premium or Robux as it supports the channel at no extra cost to you. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.